Hola, ¿cómo están? Estamos acá con Alex Desseri, nieto del doctor Víctor Frankl, quien nos va a conceder una entrevista. En principio, Alex, nos gustaría saber desde tu perspectiva de qué manera sientes que la logoterapia nos podría ayudar a comprender mejor la realidad actual a nivel mundial, teniendo en cuenta la guerra de Ucrania, las crisis económicas. I think uh, in many ways uh, logotherapy um, is an ideal concept um, to understand the world, and especially in terms uh, of, of crisis and how human beings, how we all deal with crisis. It, it was a turbulent time when my grandfather came up with his theory, so um, you would think that uh, he knew a thing or two about uh, uncertainties, about suffering, um, and also the, the damaging uh, effects that, that suffering can have on us, but also how people can overcome difficult situations, these challenges, and what actually makes the difference in a difficult situation, How, what, what is the most potent protector, protective factors in times of crisis. And he could uh, isolate meaning as the most important factor. So he took something that was kind of on the, on the outskirts uh, of, of, the, uh, of the focus especially in psychology, a meaningful life, what's that? That's, those are questions that are, go beyond the psychophysical aspects, so we're not going to deal with them. Those were the times in which he came up with this concept, and he said, no, you're forgetting something that uh, is not just uh, a contributing factor to help people, to build resilience, to enable people to uh, undergo stresses and challenges and come out on the other end and be okay. But it is a central factor, it is in fact the central factor, is meaning. Does my suffering have meaning or can I transform something that seems absolutely meaningless uh, when, when, it, when it happens and when at first plans? How can I transform something that's apparently completely meaningless into something meaningful, into something that uh, helps me grow, into something that helps others grow, into something that of, of which some uh, value can derive, not just for the self, but for others. And times haven't changed, the world is always uh, going from, from one crisis to the other, so I think uh, in a way that makes his theories just as relevant, if not more, um, today than they were when he conceived them. Mm -hmm. Y eh, también nos gustaría saber, desde tu perspectiva, ¿Cuáles son las razones por las que sientes tú sería importante que los profesionales de la salud, los psicólogos, los psiquiatras, se formen, estudien la logoterapia? ¿De qué manera la logoterapia sería nutritivo para, para ellos, para su quehacer profesional? I think the most uh, important factor is the concept of the human being uh, in logotherapy and analysis, ex existential analysis. Uh, and uh, that is a three-dimensional concept of human existence, not a two-dimensional. So we have those, those uh, two um, streams, you could say, that have developed. One is the kind of reductionism that happens when everything is traced back to the genes, to the body, to the soma, to the physical aspect. And uh, there's a lot of truth to that, and it's fascinating. A lot of uh, what we do is already put down in our, our genes and has an effect. Or all, all the genes of organisms living within, within us, the, the biome, that has a huge influence on, on our behavior. We know that, we learn more about that, and it's, and it's fascinating. So there, but, but to reduce everything and to say, this is all there is to the story, that is the big mistake, that is what Franco stood up against. So we, are, uh, we find a lot of influences in the genes, and the other s stream of, of thought or uh, party is saying, oh, it's, it's, it's all learned behavior, the behavior of models, right? So it's all about what, what went into our, uh, onto our hard drive, so to speak, which is put there by society, or by the parents, or peers, and, and all that. 
and, uh, and those are influences. Once you're programmed, uh, it's hard to change that, and you need therapy to kind of reprogram people. But we're essentially determined. So these are very reductionistic, deterministic, uh, me mechanical uh, point uh, conceptions of what makes us human, and it takes away the freedom and the. Uh, concept of the human being in logotherapy is, is, is different in that it added, Frankl added a third dimension, which he called the noetic dimension. So there's the physical genes and all that, there's the psychological, all that we've learned, trained behaviors, but then there is a, a third level, and that is the person that we are. This is the existential level, if you like. And this might be the most interesting. And so it, it's completely uh, neglected by other schools of thought, uh, and he put it right in the, in the center. He said, this is where we have the freedom, where we have conscience, where we have interest, where we're inspired, where we choose. How are we going to deal with the conditions that um, we are exposed to? And as human beings, we have that freedom, even if it's limited, because sometimes conditions can be very limited. For example, if somebody is, is on drugs or an alcoholic, right? Or if there's a severe mental challenge like, like schizophrenia or something, uh, we can't, we have no power over those, we can't control those very I mean, We try, but it doesn't always work. But still, we have the freedom. Every human being has the freedom to decide what am I going to put out into this world? What do I decide to do? with these conditions. So we're not free from conditions, but we're also not 100% determined. And this was the great goal. And therefore, uh, logotherapy and my grandfather's theories are a great way to augment and to widen the, the view and to gain a different perspective on what makes us human and uh, what, what, uh, where, are we, where are we moving, what really motivates us. And when, once you know that all the other uh, tools that exist of how to, they can be implemented, they can be combined because they really don't interfere because they're happening on different levels or in different dimensions. Eh, Alex, con respecto al cambio constante eh, del mundo, de las situaciones, las personas, la logoterapia, ¿de qué manera podría ayudarnos a hacerle frente a este cambio constante, al devenir de la vida? Well, and, and logotherapy always puts the focus on the here and now. So what in the here and now, in this concrete situation, in this moment, with those concrete individuals, you and me, what's the meaning of the situation? To find out what, what is most meaningful to do. So the view is always directed outside of oneself and into the situation to find out what's going on. To find, as he put it, the reality that's emerging from the background, uh, excuse me, the possibility that is emerging from the background of reality. And with this focus, there's no, there's just no uh, meaning in, in constantly looking backwards. From time to time we do that, but uh, you, you cannot remain looking back because the past is over, there's nothing you can do about it. You cannot change anything in the past. You cannot live in the past. Uh, and, and it's also not meaningful to constantly be uh, in, in the near or far away future uh, unless it is connected to your actions here and now. What do I want to, do I want to, I don't know, become a, a, a doctor and then I have to study now, right? So, um, we look, we have the view forward and I think this requires a certain flexibility to say, okay, this moment with this possibilities is now over because every moment can lose the possibilities at any second. We don't know if we have the same possibilities tomorrow that we do have today, you know, I mean, you might break your leg tomorrow and then it, you, you, you cannot be, uh, uh, run the marathon that you were running today, right? So it constantly changes and um, it requires us to be flexible and it requires us to be focused on the here and now. I think all healing ultimately happens through the here and now. Um, it anchors us in 
the present moment, which is the only place where we have control. We can't control our actions or what happens tomorrow. We can't control what we did or what happened yesterday, but we have full control over what we are going to do in this moment. And so this is, uh, I think there's a, a, a prayer by uh, Santa Exupéry uh, that talks about that, the, the, the importance, help, I think it's a prayer. God, help, help me recognize that the most important hour is the one that's just, just begun. Uh, and I think it's just a nice poem that expresses this thought very clearly. And I think this is ultimately a good prevention uh, for us to, and a reminder to not get stuck with the view of the closed door of what was yesterday. Uh, we, we, we do that because we're human, but um, sometimes we have to, uh, or it's good to remind ourselves or others that, okay, you've had this, there's nothing, uh, It is sad that we have to say goodbye to things that can no longer be. This is also not a terrible or sad or tragic thing in itself because we wouldn't be sad if we didn't have something of value that continues to exist in the form of being passed. Uh, it's not, as you know, the saying of my grandfather uh, mm -hmm. when he said, nothing that is in your past is uh, irretrievably lost but is it is un uh, how do you put it? Uh, it, it it is saved uh, and stored safely in your past from which it cannot be taken away it cannot be undone so you kind of rescued it from just a fleeting possibility in the here and now into a past that is a reality that will continue forever something you have done something you have experienced, you will have done so forever and for all times and nothing can undo it. Um, I think there's some, some, uh, something really positive uh, in that, especially as we get older, uh, to see the value of the, uh, of the realities that we have created, that we, that we helped give birth to through our existence and that make up our life, our decisions that are day-to-day, minute-to-minute decisions that um, uh, we turned into realities. And in some way, this um, experience or this different way to look at the transitoriness of human existence um, it is a very positive uh, thought and has a lot of value um, at any age to look at that. Uh, there's no reason to envy young people for the potential possibilities, and many possibilities, hopefully, that they have in front of them. But how about the many, many realities that someone who is, who is of, of high age has uh, stored in their past? Uh, possibilities can always be taken away, but realities remain forever. Muchísimas gracias, Alex. Eh, gracias por tu tiempo, tu disposición. Y bueno, gracias. <laughs> Danke. Eh, ¿Hay algo más que te gustaría agregar como para cerrar esta conversación? It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.